So when you signed up for this, and you said, let's get together and let's, uh, let's spend the whole day talking about health care. Yeah. Yeah. Did that just jazz you up? <clears throat> All right. When was the last time that you cracked open your renewals? A couple days ago? A couple months ago? All right. What was the emotion that ran through you? Were you excited? Did anyone feel like this? Now, did you feel like this because it was only single digit increases? <laughs> All right. Did you feel like this because you got a negative trend? Who got a negative trend this year? Who had negative? Raise it high. Come on, be proud. There you go. I got one. I got two. Who had negatives? We got two. I got three. I got three. All right. Who had it for the second year in a row? Come on, raise them high. Didn't have anybody? Oh, that's too bad. Right, wait, why, did you, why were you so... You didn't want to jinx it, did you? You, you didn't want to jinx that one, right? I had three that had negative this year, but they didn't want to jinx it. That's why they didn't want to j jump up. Uh, who, how many of you are more like this? Anyone more like this? Right? We, we get it, right? We get it. Is this more like what it is? Right? We feel like this. It's the pain, right? These are February's numbers from SHRM. This is what the national average is on what the costs are, right? This is the total health care costs. Now, you know, three years ago when I was down in California, as VP of HR in California, I mean, we're in public sector, we're in, we're in, uh, in higher ed, we we're paying over 30000 a year for family coverage. Yeah, holy cow, right? Is that sustainable? How can that possibly be sustainable? As a portion of total revenues, how can that possibly be sustainable? I remember it was 1996 cracking open the, uh, the renewals and saying, how can this possibly be sustainable? I would kill for those rates, right, back in 1996. $19,616, can you imagine 20 years from now what we're gonna be saying, right? Yeah, goodness, but, right, if we keep doing what we're doing, what? Keep getting what we're going to keep getting, right? Keep getting what we've been getting. And isn't that the case? If you think back about what we've been doing in healthcare, are, have we been doing anything differently? We keep banging our heads against the wall. We keep talking about healthcare reform, but are we doing anything really that differently? Are we? Maybe, maybe we, we say we're trying this and trying that. Maybe we change the music and maybe we try to dance a little different, but are we fundamentally doing things differently? Are we? We talk about being strategic business partners, but are we truly doing things differently? Are you, as an individual, doing things differently? That's the question, and that's the key question about today. Are you? You see, if you take a look over the past, this goes from 1988 to just last year, right? This is 30 year trend. Does this look like we're doing anything differently? Total health care cost, does it? This looks like we're doing the same thing, but whatever it is that we're doing, it ain't working. Would you agree? It's not working. It's not working. You know, I asked this question, what if it could work? What if it could work? And here's what I'm figuring out. If this isn't the first time that, uh, that I've done this. It's not the first time. What I figured out is that if we wait for somebody else to do it, it's not gonna work. But if we start doing things locally, if we start doing things ourselves and we start to make little tweaks, it just might work. You see, here, and I've shared this before with some folks, but uh, you know, I got to Wagstaff. Um, this was their trend, 2012 to 2016. They almost doubled their total spend. Almost doubled it, right? It's no one's fault. It's no one's fault. No one's to blame. Does this look familiar to some of you? Right, some of your, some of your trends? They almost doubled their total, total cost in four years. Right? And so you project that out, you project that out 10 years using real numbers. Does that look like some of your costs? These are not fake numbers. These are using real numbers projected out 10 years out. I guarantee you revenues don't change that much. I guarantee you revenues don't change that much. Right? So what do you do? What do you do? Do I wait for healthcare reform to make it happen? Or do we keep doing the same cost of what? Cost sharing to employees? They can't afford that kind of a cost share. Do we keep gouging out benefits? What do you keep doing? So he asks some questions. Is it possible to bend the curve? Is it? 
Is it possible? No one's going to bring the solution to you. No one's going to bring the solution. The brokers will bring you suggestions, but it's up to you to decide whether you're going to do it. Others can bring you suggestions, but it's up to you to decide, are you going to take the steps? That's what today's all about. Well, let me tell you what's happened over the last three years. This is what's happened over the last three years. Three years, folks, three years. I've got three years of negative trend. Three years in a row of negative trend. Three years of reducing health care costs for employees. In fact, this year I dropped family rates by 100 bucks a month. We gave employees a $1,200 a year raise just by slashing health care costs. That's the third year in a row that we gave them, like, gave them a, 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 a reduction. Why? Because we could. That's what we're doing. And it's not, it's not one person's, not one person's uh, ability here. It's a partnership. It's a partnership. And we're not talking about wag stuff today. We're not. We're talking about mindsets. Because new mindsets create new results. And that's what today is all about, is are you ready for a new mindset? We've been talking about this stuff for over 20 years. We've been talking about everything here has been talked about before. We're going to talk about a few more things. We're going to be introducing some new ideas. And are you ready to get the new results? Are you ready to take some steps forward to get the new results? And it's up to you to say, I'm ready to open my mind and take one nugget today and try it out. Are you ready for it? And that's the question. Is today the day that you're going to take one more thing and give it a shot? And you can come up with the excuse. You can come up with the excuse all that you want. But let's talk about the normal trend. Let's say your, your, your renewal starts. Let's say your, your plan year starts in January. Here's where your plan year starts and you know, then we work backwards. Here's open enrollment. Plan design changes set in about here. Renewal, here's the magic envelope date. So when do we start planning? About right here. Here's where the plan, here's where the prayers start, right? Is this your strategy? Let's be honest. Hope is not a strategy. Okay, we're in HR, yes it is, right? <laughs> Hope works out pretty well, right, for some of us. It's not an effective, it's not a proactive strategy. It is a good strategy sometimes. Sometimes it's our only strategy. Sometimes it works. But it's not an effective strategy. You see, our strategy has to start here or sooner. When you crack open the renewal, it's too late. You can't change anything from behind. At this point, it's a mitigation. Once you open up the renewals, it's a mitigation. But what starts is today. What am I going to do to change tomorrow? And that's where we have to do the mind shift. Where can we start for tomorrow? Because what's the number one driver of costs? It's claims, right? It's claims. And what causes claims? It's health. And if we can start to improve the health, we start to reduce the claims. It's that simple. When we start managing costs, costs are the symptoms. Costs are the symptoms. They're not the problem. Costs are the symptoms, not the problem. And when we start to manage the costs, and that's the only thing that we're focusing on, we will never solve the problem. We will never solve the problem. Yes, we have to manage costs. Yes, that's part of the problem. Yes, that's part of the process. But if that's the only thing that we're focused on, we will never solve the problem. We have to take a comprehensive approach. You know, this sounds different, but you know, all right, yes, I'm geeking out here. But uh, you know the scene when they're about to, to go rescue Morpheus, right? And you now Trinity's telling Neil, dude, man, this, this plan will never work, right? No one's ever done this before. And what's Neil's response? Well, that's why it will work. Right? That's why it'll work. So some of the ideas that we cover today, right? You're going to say, that's weird, man. I know. In fact, if somebody gives me an idea about healthcare and they, stand out and they say, but nobody's ever tried this here before. You've probably got my attention. You probably have. If they say, this is new, I'm not sure that anyone's given this a shot yet. I'm going to say, I'm, all, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm all ears. In fact, uh, this is kind of new. There have only been a handful that give this a shot. Let's try it. You might get sued over this. All right. <laughs> it drives my brokers nuts. It's awesome. It's awesome. That's why I have two ears, one for each broker, right? <laughs> I know, it drives them nuts too. It's, it's good. But oftentimes then you say, all right, you've got these great results. How do I get there? How do I get there? Give me the list. Give me the magic. Give me the map. We've got to ask two more questions before we get to the how list, right? First, what do you want? 
you got to figure out what do you want. But then the other one is, why do you want it? You've got to ask these questions. You see, the first question is, what do you want? You need to, bigger, you need to be specific about what do you want. Because nothing is dynamic unless it's specific. If you want dynamic results, you've got to ask specifically, what do you want? What do you want? Because if you're not clear about what you want, you're not going to get clear results. Period. End of story. And as for the why, if all you want is money, that will not be a compelling enough reason. If all your employees find out is that you just want money, they will not get buy-in. Period. End of story. If all they find out is all you want to do is save money, they will not be devoted to this. That's, period. That's it. That's it. If all you want is to save a buck, that is not a compelling enough reason for this. You will not get the devotion and loyalty from your employees that it's going to take to make the change. It's not. And let's be honest, it's not enough. It's not enough. We'll talk more about this. But the other consideration here on the how, the how depends on who's driving your plan. Because if you're the only person, if you in this room is the only person who's in charge of this, you don't have enough horsepower to make this happen. You can't make this happen on your own. And even you and the CFO, you're not enough. You need the willingness and the, and the ability of everybody on your team, meaning all the employees to get on board. You have to get the participation. You have to get the buy-in of everybody on this. You really do. Because they're the ones that are driving the claims. You've got to make believers out of your folks. You've got to get them on board and you've got to have evangelists on this. You've got to get them excited about this. And once you make partners and believers out of this, miracles start to happen. And no, it doesn't take decades to make this happen. It takes days. It takes days. You can make this happen. Now comes the excuses, right? But Wade, we've got a fully insured program so none of this stuff works. Now pick your excuse. Yes, it can work. Claims are claims. Claims are what drive costs. You affect the claims, you affect the costs. It'll work. Let's talk about these. Today we're going to introduce you to some of these best strategies, right? Some of these best strategies that you're going to need to know on how to affect. Things like you know, and some of these best practices. So, so you're going to learn about strategies, right? You're going to need these strategies. They've got to be multidimensional. It's not just about insurance. You've got to have a multidimensional approach to address this. It's not just about the insurance. It's got to be participative. You've got to involve the employees. You have to involve p different levels of this. It has to be multi-year. You're not going to fix this in one year. It's not. It's got to be, it's got to be over time. And you've got to get the top to buy in. How? That's a longer discussion, but pick up on the context clues today in our conversations. But you've got to build the partnership. Why? Because a funny thing is that when the employees start feeling and being treated like partners, they act like partners and they start working for you. They start coming to you with ideas on how to make things work. It's really weird, but they do. And once you get all your employees starting to act like partners, things start to go really fast and they start to develop exponentially. It's pretty cool. You're going to start talking about wellness, and it has to be an integrated approach, not just trinkets and trash, not just the, we'll give you a couple of bucks. It has to be wholesale. It has to be at a higher, higher level that is a true investment. You have to give tons of money away because what happens is when you start dumping money back into their pockets, employees get stingy and they find new ways to get better on their own and they start to find ways to be healthy because they don't want to give their money away and they start to take care of themselves so they don't have to spend their own money. It's pretty cool when they do that kind of stuff. You start finding out some new ways to deal with pharmacy and you start to realize that Walgreens is not the only place to go get your drugs. You start to realize that these specialty drugs are a bugger, but there are other solutions to go find your specialty drugs and we're going to talk about some different options today. You start to learn some new terminologies like biosimilars and some other ways to cut the costs so you can start talking in terms of hundreds of thousands of dollars in savings on your pharma, right? You, you, all of a sudden you're not a victim anymore. And you start talking about value design so you're not just taking off the shelf design, you're starting to create a plan that works for your people. You start to get the, the design that works for them so they get the care that they need that works for them and they get the care that they need so they can remain healthy. And you start to educate them so they can become partners and they can start to save money like crazy so they can go to the pharmacy and use something like good rx so they can save hundreds of dollars themselves and save you thousands of dollars on drugs and it costs you nothing it costs you nothing right these educational things you start to communicate throughout the year not just once a year at, at open enrollment time right and as they become educated consumers this just happens it just happens 
and then you start to become proficient at mining data because you can't fix what you don't know. You can't fix what you don't know. And as you start to identify opportunities of what's broken and you start to find little pockets out there of needs and you start to create your plan design that meets those needs and you start to address those pockets of high costs and get the needs met. You start to address those costs and help the sick people get healthy. All of a sudden you address those needs and they're not sick anymore. And then you start to realize that this addresses business costs because sick people all of a sudden don't miss work anymore and they're productive at work. That's weird. Then all of a sudden people stay longer at work and then you address retention issues and then pretty soon people are happier at work people are productive at work that's weird too it's awesome it's awesome so these are some best practices well then you can stretch into some other fun stuff you get into some of these newer things like medical tourism that's been around for decades but that can be domestic medical tourism, sending them across state lines, heck, send, heck sending them uh, across the state if you want to, finding the best places to save you tens of thousands of dollars, right? Finding uh, direct billing opportunities, getting you over across, uh, even across state lines so I can find the same surgery for 60% less just by sending them across the state line outside of the network. Yeah, we could talk later on that one. Pharma tourism. I'm going to talk about that one this afternoon, right? Yeah, for specialty drugs. Yeah, it's awesome. Reference rate based pricing. If you like that, HSA. I give them a up to $2,700 back. That's right. I dump $2,700 back to my employees because I find that if I give them all the money back, they get really stingy. They save me a ton of cash. It's phenomenal. How much money? In the, last, in the last three years, right? Uh, we're not even at three years. This is my third year going into it. I've got a $2 million reserve. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. You can do a lot of cool stuff with two million bucks. Joining a captive for your stop loss, it's like self-funding for your, for your stop loss. You can get some like-minded folks together so you can save more money. It's cool stuff, it's cool stuff. International mail order. Ordering direct from the, from the manufacturers to send directly to your employees. You save a ton of money, the employees save a ton of money. It's legal. Don't worry. It's legal. Don't listen to the media. It's legal. The FDA can kiss it. <laughs> and yes, we've saved what? 50 to 60 grand so far off of this, off of just a handful of employees. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Now at this point you're saying, that's nice, Wade. <clears throat> There's no way my CFO is going to buy off on this. You know, it's like, who do you work for? You're crazy. This is crazy talk. There's no way. There's no way. <clears throat> Look, we're going to offer a bunch of different ideas today. We're going to talk about some things that maybe it works for you. Maybe it resonates for you. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe not everything's going to be great for you. But what I'm saying is, obviously the strategies for the last 20 to 30 years have not worked. They haven't. But one thing's for sure, waiting for a solution at the national level isn't going to work. Waiting for something at the state level is not going to work. It's got to be local. It's got to be local. It's up to you. But to quote the great ancient philosopher, Canadian philosopher, Getty Lee, right? <laughs> if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. <clears throat> if, uh, if you decide not to do anything with it, that's fine. <clears throat> We're no worse off than we were before. But you've got a choice to make and you can decide what to make. But here's what some of the results are from our choices and that is transformation. <clears throat> By making this transformation, you can go a step further <clears throat> and you can begin to make those, those changes today. Here's the, cha here are the changes that we started with, and sure the results are fine, but they didn't happen by magic, and it started by deciding on three things. Here's where we started, we decided on three goals, and this is where we really began. We didn't just instantly poof, have some magic. We started with three base goals. Goal number one was this. Our focus and our emphasis was to increase and maintain the health and well-being of our employees and their families. Because we know, number one, Healthy employees are happy employees, happy employees are productive employees. And you know what, if the employees and their families are not healthy, employees are not going to be at work. Not mentally. If they've got sick kids and sick family members at home, they're just not going to be there. It affects performance, it affects retention, it affects everything. 
Then number two, we're going to reduce the cost for the employees. We're going to reduce the cost for the employees as much as possible. I want to put as much money in their pockets as possible. I want to improve their standard of living. That's what I want to do. And then number three, we'll save Wagstaff some money if we can. This is in rank order, folks. This is in rank order. And guess what? If I can solve number one and number two, number three is just going to happen. It's going to happen. So using those standards, let's talk about what the results are. Right? This is a multifaceted program, but uh, you know, we, we, we focus on engagement. So one of, our, one of our, our keys is the wellness committee. So we asked them to put together some wellness events. So let's talk about just what happened in 2018, right? 2018, oh, just even one of the, one of the effects is uh, just weight loss and maintenance challenges. So we don't just do weight loss. We, we, we invite people who want to maintain joining this. 2018 alone, we lost over 800 pounds. We have 400 employees, of course, you know, only a few participate. 800 pounds, can you believe that? You know what happens to 800 pounds? That's a ton of, that's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff, right? With, uh, with the money that we save, we even hire a personal trader to come on site. She's responsible alone for 200 of those pounds. We hear stories all day long of lives changed, Right? I can move again. I can, and, and, and this doesn't get into the personal stories of, of individuals who've lost this much weight and that much weight. We have lives changed. We have people who can do this again, who can do that again. Individuals' lives are changed. Individuals who are transformed. But uh, what's not transformed, who's, you know, the weights that's not included in this story? You remember this guy? Yeah. Uh, about a year ago. Yeah, because we uh, got into these programs, we started to play around and experiment with relationships, relationships with doctors. Yeah, this guy ended up having, uh, you know, being diagnosed with stage four fatty liver, entering into cirrhosis. That creates complications. Worked with his doctor for a bit last year, couldn't figure it out. Had a relationship with a hospital in Costa Rica. Went to Costa Rica in December. Yeah, had some stuff done. Here he is 130 pounds later. So, you know what that does? Yeah! <laughs> That's transformation, right? That's transformative. That's transformative. But this kind of transformation, this kind of transformation when you have that done, this is what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. But this is where you can change lives. It's not just about insurance. It's not just about money. It's about changing people's lives. And isn't that what we got into HR for in the first place? Isn't that what we're here to do? And isn't that what today is all about? And so what I'm asking for today, what I'm asking for today is not just to sit here and get your credits. You can sit here and get your credits if you want, but you've got a choice. You've really got a choice. And your choice is this. Sit here and get your credits. Try and stay awake. Suck down some more coffee and caffeine if you want. You're going to need it. <laughs> Come about 2 o'clock. But uh, here's your choice. Your choice is to listen up. Jot down some ideas and decide, could this work? Could this work? Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Network with people around you. We've got a hundred different people here. We've got a hundred people here with ideas and a ton of experience. We've got hundreds of years of experience here with different ideas and different stories. We've got some presenters here, but we've got time in between to listen and network. Network the heck out of it today, folks. Listen to ideas, ask questions. We've got vendors, we've got brokers, we've got experience here like none other that you've had all year long. Take advantage of it, ask questions, and get together and find out some new solutions. Today's the day to figure this thing out. Let's make that mind shift happen and let's start today. So let's make the most of today. Thank you very much.